It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, and that makes this show 5.45 Live. Tonight, we'll talk about the BHA's new estimates and the upcoming Development Review Board meeting, which could put residents uh, back in their Melrose Terrace homes. Um, we'll also talk about uh, a new uh, appointee to Vermont's uh, Civil uh, Months Supreme Court. And we'll uh, also catch you up on all the latest calendar highlights. We'll talk about some events. Also, we'll be live broadcasting for Gallery Walk out on the streets. All that and plenty more coming up on 545 Live. Catherine Turnis, uh, producer and co-director, along with Roland Boyden, of the only live show for BCTV called Artist Alamo. Mode. Uh, we are going to be on this Thursday, December the 1st, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. with a great band called Little Orphan, and they do Cajun music, top-of-the-line stuff. So please, check us out. All right, next, Brattleboro Housing Authority topped the local news for quite some time. Uh, two DRB meetings back, they applied to overturn um, cost estimates um, that would uh, mean that residents could not return to five properties in their Melrose Terrace area. Um, now the BHA has um, re uh, turned in a new estimate, and at the upcoming Brattleboro Development Review Board meeting on Monday, um, the board will decide whether or not to accept them. Now, uh, that meeting will be broadcast live on BCTV. We'll show it on uh, Channel 8, starting at, I believe, 7 p.m. And we'll talk a little bit more about that during our quick glance as well. But uh, first, I want to take a little flashback in time to our special that we did um, at the, from the last uh, Development Review Board meeting where they talked about this and uh, their results. Let's, uh, let's do a little 545 Live Rewind in time. Uh, in the case, uh, the, the decision from the uh, zoning administrator in determining substantial flood damage in buildings 159, 165, 230, 246, and 248 uh, deals with five structures. And we decided to split this board's decision into five separate decisions, at this point, to five separate decisions, one for each of those structures. Um, it, the board, um, at this point, feels that the applicant has not met the burden of proof um, required for determination of substantial damage or improvement. As outlined by the FEMA guidelines for buildings 159, 165, 246 and 248. That's four out of the five buildings. We are going to give the applicant the opportunity to meet that burden of proof, and we'll continue the hearing for two weeks to our next to our next hearing in relation to those four structures. Um, we would like the applicant to provide us with more information to enable us to make a determination. More information will be a uniform estimate uniform and uh, hopefully credible estimate from your contractor. Um, the discrepancies between the various buildings the board finds troubling, particularly the elimination of overhead, the elimination of some of those <coughs> things that were discussed in tonight's, tonight's hearing. Uh, this coming Monday, December 5th, to BCTV Channel 8 in at 7 p.m. for a live broadcast of that meeting, which is open to the public. It's in this here 230 Main Street Municipal Center, just north of the library on the second floor Brattleboro Select Board meeting room. Um, so it's, uh, all are welcome to come. Again, a, a public meeting. All right, next. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services announced on Tuesday that Vermont will receive more than $18 million to fund um, and design the development of a larger health benefits exchange that serves as the foundation for the state's future single-player health plan. Um, now, overall, the federal uh, $220 million in affordable insurance exchange grants will help uninsured citizens buy private health insurance uh, through online marketplaces. Uh, a big step. Uh, Mike Merwicki is the uh, state rep for Putney. 
Um, he uh, also hosts the popular Brattleboro community television show Montpelier Update, which includes um, live webcasts from the State House during the legislative session. He'll also be hosting a uh, pre-session kickoff in this here studio with legislators getting ready to start the session as well. He spoke to the Brattleboro Reformer about um, this money that's coming in and said, this is what we hoped for, is the, is the quote from him. He's a, a new appointee to the Health Access Oversight Committee. All right, moving on this week, Peter Shumlin uh, sign, uh, swore in attorney and civil rights activist Beth Robinson as the Vermont's next Supreme Court Justice. We've got a clip uh, from his uh, swearing in here. The Vermont State Supreme Court makes extraordinary judgments that protect people's rights, that make a difference for those that don't have a voice, that historically make huge differences for our democracy and for our citizens. So I took this one seriously. Now, when I knew there was an opening, I was afraid that Beth might apply. <laughs> <laughs> and so I immediately did everything I could to try to convince anyone in the many, many senior staff meetings that Beth participated in that no one would ever want to serve here. <laughs> I even got so desperate as to suggest one time when we came back and swear in some other justices. I came back and I said, you know, the carpet to kind of drag. <laughs> Governor Peter Shumlin swearing in Beth Robinson, the latest addition to the Vermont Supreme Court. All right, um, moving on, we got to make sure that we uh, get our calendar coverage going, which means I need to find my, my favorite dart throwing animation. All right, we'll start off the calendar with a couple uh, quick things here. Looking forward to the holiday season. Of course, now there's a uh, lighting tree ceremony on Friday at 5.30 p.m. in Planny Park. It's just before our live broadcast from Gallery Walk downtown, so we'll be getting some footage from that for you, up to the minute footage. Uh, also, the Putney, uh, there'll be a library book sale that starts on Friday. Of course, we don't have a show tomorrow, so we've got to publicize it today. You can find it more at brooks.lib.vt. Dot US and the Putney Crafts Tour was very successful over the weekend. There's going to be uh, more crafts and arts during Gallery Walk this Friday as well. All right, and we'll take a brief look at uh, the iBrattlebro calendar coming up for this week. That's uh, what you can do if you need to get events just like I do when I'm compiling this show. And uh, go to uh, their calendar section up in the top left corner where individuals and organizations from around the community um, post events so it's really the most up-to-date information and we'll uh, jump ahead we talked about the tree lighting ceremony um, and we're going to look at uh, some other events as well friday there's a kids craft fair at uh, the river garden all children are invited to sell their own crafts at this holiday gallery walk event um, you can find out more about that we'll post uh, some contact info on our facebook page you can contact gia uh, Neswald, again, her contact info will post on our Facebook page after the event if you want to find out how to get uh, your child and their um, arts and crafts involved in this event. And uh, looking ahead, we'll uh, jump up to the Marlboro College Graduate School. Um, this is also on Friday at 5 p.m. Jeremy Grantham discusses investing, resource limitations, and global warming. A recent New York Times profile of Grantham says his quarterly letters command a cult following of readers within and beyond the financial industry because they inspire even the most short-term profit-minded investors to do a little fate-of-the-world-scale thinking. That's the press release for that. Again, 5 to 6.30 p.m. at the Marlboro College Graduate Center here in Brattleboro. Now, there's plenty more events coming up, uh, more than I can get to in this show. But again, head to ibrattlebro.com if you want to find out more events. Of course, for arts, you can check Thursday's Brattleboro Reformer paper, their ovation section. It was uh, very in-depth on, on everything coming up in the arts community. All right, and with that, I'm going to try and uh, get our similar quick glance uh, schedule TV phone thing, which will allow me to segue into that next. Let's uh, see if I can get this here animation going. Just wouldn't be a quick glance if I uh, didn't have my TV following animation. Of course, the quick glance for anybody that's watched any 545 Live knows by now that it's my daily opportunity to shamelessly plug what's coming up on BCTV and both our Comcast cable channels 8 and 10. For that, I'm going to head back to our website, which is brattlebrotv.org, and right on the homepage, it'll show us uh, the 
the most recent stuff that's coming up and we can take a look. It's Wednesday, which means that Al Jazeera News off of Free Speech TV, the Middle East News program, comes up. That shows at 6 p.m. directly following 545 Live on Wednesdays. And we also show it Saturday nights as well. And coming up at 6.30 p.m., we have the latest BCTV Open Studio hosted by WTSA's Tim Johnson. Uh, Tim sat down with Larry Hain uh, George Haynes and Larry Smith, uh, co-founders of Project Feed the Thousands, along with WTSA's Kelly Corbeil, who's taken over the reins on Project Feed the Thousands, and Melinda Buss, now the director of the Brattleboro Area Drop-In Center. They're talking about Project Feed the Thousands. That's coming up tonight, 6.30 p.m. right here on Channel 8. You can also catch it on our video on demand at brattleborotv.org. Find out how you can get involved to help meet their goal. They're trying to get 25 tractor-trailer trucks of food and $125,000. So pick up a, a couple extra canned goods, maybe some peanut butter, toothpaste, toothbrushes, some Annie's macaroni and cheese. Anything can help uh, and drop it in the bins um, at, at places like Price Trapper or Hannaford's when you're doing your grocery shopping. Every little bit counts. You can also make a cash donation at the River Valley Credit Union. Um, now, uh, also coming up today, we have the latest Transition Putney uh, lecture. We've had a slew of these on. You can keep abreast of all the Transition Putney events, and there's plenty of them. Uh, and this one is on local investing in renewable energy. So that video again coming up, that's at 10.30 p.m. tonight. And I'll quickly hop over to our government and education sister channel on our website. It's conveniently set up right next to channel 8 and take a look. Um, at what's coming up, we've got uh, a rebroadcast of the Vernon Select Board meeting at 7.19 p.m. tonight. Um, and then at uh, 12 a.m. for all you nocturnals out there, a midnight showing of the most recent Brattleboro Select Board meeting. All right. And now, of course, there's plenty more going on on our channel. So go to brattleborotv.org. We've got schedules updated to the minute along with live streaming and video on demand for all local programming. That's all at brattleborotv.org. All right, that's a full lit, everybody. Thanks for checking in with me. But before you turn back to Mad Money, remember, we'll be back Friday. We're broadcasting live from Gallery Walk, where we'll get all the uh, highlights you can handle for BCTV and 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden saying good night, everybody.